Hey y'all, Coach Unify here talking about the third temple. And in this video, I'm going to show you the relationship between the third temple and the Feast of Passover. First, I'm going to show you by way of scripture how the third temple will actually be a spiritual temple. And then we're going to look to see how that temple will actually be built on the hearts of humanity. And then lastly, we're going to show you what exactly you have to do in order to make sure that you are part of that third temple. So let's get started. Now, one of the first verses that I want to bring to your attention is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. In this verse, you see the word temple mentioned three times. One in which it says that we are the temple. But now, when we come over to the Strong's Concordance and we look this verse up in the Interlinear Bible, we see that when it's referring to temple, it uses Strong's number G3485. And when we come over and look at the definition of 3485, it says a temple. But then when you look at the usage, it says a shrine that part of the temple where God himself resides. Now let me bring you over to Matthew chapter 26 where now we have the Messiah talking about the temple when he said I sat daily with you teaching in the temple in verse 55 and then when we look down in verse 61 of that same chapter you have his accusers talking about how he said he would destroy the temple. Now, when we come back over to the concordance and we look for these verses, we only see verse 61 and verse 55 is not here. And when we look closely at verse 61 in the interlinear Bible, we see that, yes, the word temple there has Strong's number 3485. But then when we come to Matthew chapter 26 and verse 55 in the interlinear Bible and look at the word temple, it has Strong's number 2411. And when we look at 2411, it also says temple. But then when we look at the usage, it says a temple, either the whole building or specifically the outer courts open to worshipers. So here we have the word temple used two times in the same chapter but they have different meanings in verse 55 the Messiah is saying that he sat teaching in the temple and in that verse he's talking about a building but then in verse 61 when he's talking about how the temple will be destroyed and built up in three days he's talking about the place in which God dwells so this makes it clear that there are actually two kinds of temples being talked about in the New Testament. You have the brick and mortar temple that was first built by Solomon and restored by Zerubbabel. But then you also have the temple of Christ or the body of Christ. And what's even more interesting is that the brick and mortar temple Concordance number 2411 is not used in the book of Revelation at all. Even though you see the word temple in books like Ephesians, Thessalonians, and Revelation, it's never talking about Concordance number 2411. It's only talking about the body of Christ. It's only talking about that same temple that we read about in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. So the third temple that we hear about in the book of Revelation is not a brick and mortar temple at all. It is a spiritual temple. It's that sanctuary that we hear about in Exodus chapter 15 and verse 17, which is established by the Lord's hands, not by the hands of man. This is confirmed over in Acts chapter 7 and verse 38 when it says that the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. The third temple is not a brick and mortar temple. That is a spiritual temple like we see over in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5. We are the stones that make up that temple. We are the building material of the third temple. So, how is this temple constructed? 
And for that, we must jump over to the book called The General Epistle of Barnabas. In chapter 8, verse 11 is where it starts talking about the construction of the third temple. You see how he's going to explain this process to us. But notice how he says that there are miserable men deceived after putting their faith in a brick and mortar temple. A temple not made by our creator, but made by humans. In other words, these men are miserable because they have constructed a building thinking that that somehow will house our father and creator who is infinite. In verse 13, he's quoting the book of Isaiah when he says, Who has measured the span of heaven and the earth with his hand? He says that heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. What is this house that we think we can build for him? How do we think we could build a place for him to rest in? Know therefore that their hope is in vain. Talking about those who put hope in a man-made temple. Then in verse 14, we see him talking about how the Messiah said that the temple would be torn down and built up again in three days. And we've already established that he's not talking about that temple that took them 40 years to build. But he's actually talking about the body of Christ and how it would be built up in three days. Verse 15 is talking about how the second temple would be destroyed, which it was. And since this book of Barnabas was written after the second temple was destroyed, you understand the question in verse 16 when it says, does God have a temple? And the answer to that question is that, yes, our father does have a temple. But notice that it says that he is the one that perfected it or built it. Now, verse 16 also has an interesting point that we won't cover too much in this video but notice how he says as soon as the week is completed the temple will be constructed that week that he's talking about we see in the same chapter in verse 3 he's talking about the 7,000 years of human history and how that third temple will be constructed at the beginning of the 7,000th year but we'll save that for another class we're now talking more about how the third temple will be constructed and not so much as when it would be constructed. But if you are interested in when it will be constructed, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we'll definitely be talking about that in future videos. Now let's come back and look at verse 17 where he's about to tell us how this temple will be built in the name of the Lord. He says that he's going to show us how this temple is to be built. In verse 18, he's making a comparison between the brick and mortar temples and our corruptible bodies, saying that before we came into the belief of our father, the habitation of our hearts was corruptible and feeble. Verse 19 says it was a house of idolatry, a house of devils. In so much that we did whatsoever was contrary unto God. But nevertheless, he says that this third temple will be built there. So how is that going to work? Well, I believe that's the message of the Messiah when he said that the temple had to be destroyed first and rebuilt. Well, again, in verse 20, he lets us know that he's going to tell us how that glorious temple is going to be built to replace that corruptible temple. Verse 21 says, having received remission of our sins and trusting in the name of the Lord, we are become renewed, being again created as it were from the beginning. Wherefore, God truly dwells in our house, that is, in us. So what this is telling us is that in order for our father to dwell in our spiritual temple, it first has to be made incorruptible. And whereas before it was feeble, now our fleshly temples must be made strong. And how is this done? By the remission of our sins. See, we have to remember that it is sin that separates us from the Father. Of course, he never moves. He's still in the same place. But when we have sinful hearts, 
We can't commune with him. We can't hear that small, still voice that speaks through our conscious when we are in a sinful state, which we all were until we got the remission of sins. It says that after we receive the remission of sins and trusting in the name of the Lord, we became renewed, being again created as if it were from the beginning. So now we have a clean slate. And we can commune with our Father once again, like we did in the beginning. And it is then that our Father will truly dwell in our spiritual temples. So when do we get this remission of our sins? When we come and look for the word remission in the Bible, we see that it is mentioned ten times. The first time being in Matthew chapter 26 and verse 28. When it says, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Now, this is actually talking about the communion festival of Passover. Are you seeing the connection here? In order for our bodies to be changed to the dwelling place of our father, we have to have our sins canceled out. We have to have the remission of sins. And what the Messiah is telling us is through the communion festival that we partake in on Passover, we get that remission. So keeping the communion festival on Passover, just like they did back during the Last Supper, is necessary for the construction of the third temple to be built on our hearts. You see, it's also talking about the New Testament or the New Covenant. I remind you again to hit that subscription button because we'll be doing another class, Lord willing, in the future to talk about the relationship between Passover and the New Covenant. Now, the next time that we see the word remission in the Bible is in Mark chapter 1 and verse 4 when it's talking about how John the Baptist preached the baptism of repentance and remission. So these two things go together. First, we are baptized into the body of Christ where all of our sins are canceled out. But, of course, humans are sinful. Our Father, in His infinite wisdom, gave us the communion festival every year at Passover in order to renew that cleanliness state. So it's necessary to be baptized once, but then to keep the Feast of Passover every year in order to maintain our tabernacles and a state clean enough for our Father to dwell there. So after all of that lead up that Barnabas did as he was preparing us to learn how the third temple was being constructed, what it boils down to is baptism and the yearly renewal of that cleanliness state through the feast of Passover and since most of us have been baptized at least once now it is up to us to be sure that we keep the Passover every year in order to keep our temples active and that kind of reminds me of the first Passover when the congregation was told that if they don't keep Passover, then they would die. Well, the way I understand it now, if we don't keep the Passover each year now, we will suffer a spiritual death. And when we look in the book of John, chapter 6, the Messiah makes it even more clear the importance of keeping the communion festival on Passover when he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. And whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And yes, that will be another class that we'll be given in the future, Lord willing, on the necessity of the Feast of Passover and the resurrection of the dead. So again, make sure you have that subscription button push so you can see those classes when they come out. What I want to do now is show you over in the book of Numbers how it is not too late to keep the Feast of Passover in the year 2021. Here we are in the month of May of the year 2021 
And for some of you, this is your first time hearing about this relationship between the third temple and the feast of Passover. And you're wondering if you've missed it and need to wait about 10 or 11 months for the next feast of Passover. Well, in the book of Numbers in chapter 9, we hear that there is a such thing called second Passover instituted by our father for those who might have been unclean in the first month or was on a journey of far off. And when you look over in Second Chronicles in chapter 30, you can see how King Hezekiah took advantage of second Passover because he wasn't aware of Passover during the first month. And not only did he command all of Jerusalem to keep the Passover in the second month, but he invited all of Israel to keep the Passover with them. So for the first time since the days of Solomon, all ten tribes were together and for what? To keep the feast of Passover during the second month. And when is the second Passover in the year 2021? It falls on the evening of May the 25th in the year 2021. That is the evening that you will have the communion festival similar to what the Messiah did during what they call the Last Supper. It is after sunset on the 25th that you will have the cup of the fruit of the vine and the unleavened bread which is the communion festival of Passover. And for the next week you should keep the feast of unleavened bread. In order to make sure that your heart is prepared for the beginning of the construction of the third temple. And you will remember to keep the rest of the feast during the year. And be sure to keep the feast of Passover every year. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.